So this is Colorado, and out here there's absolute silence, and it can be the definition of pure peace, but can also be extremely dangerous when and if, you know, the grid goes down and the cell towers choke. It got me thinking that there really may be only one way to reach the outside, and that would probably be pure, just analog signal. So here's the deal. Colorado's got mountains, really big ones. And when stuff goes sideways, whether it's blizzards, mudsides, whatever, and the networks go down, you need a way to talk to people. Not text, not TikTok, real communication. And then enter those who do actual radio comms. On this channel, we're into radio, obviously, but not from the hobby perspective. It's always from an operational, preparedness-oriented viewpoint. And what I've found in Colorado and in their ham scene is that there is a heavy presence of people who share a very similar mindset because they absolutely depend on these systems. And here, it's having a backup comm system is a necessity, and there's a strong foundation and focus on emergency ops. And this is from what would generally be considered just a bunch of regular people from teachers to truckers to tech guys they have built a statewide network that when everything else fails this one works so here's the thing out here you're on your own even right now yes there's a wildfire going on in the area but it hasn't affected any of the infrastructure it's just the terrain there are no bars no wi-fi but if you've done a little planning and you have your ht with you it could connect you to a statewide network of operators who've got your back and what I'm really talking about here is first is this thing called the Colorado Connection. And it is a linked repeater system built and maintained all by volunteers. No dues, no club politics, just a group that is all into having a reliable backup comms network. So you hit one repeater, you hit them all. It's like a neural net for the Rockies. And then there's CERN or the Colorado Emergency Reporting Net. Every night at 6.30 p.m. they go live. It's like a tactical check-in for the entire state. And here's how this all plays out. Someone calls in from a trail with no service, CERN logs the location and relays it to the right 911 center and boom, rescue teams roll out. It's fast, it's precise. And the beauty of this is it's not just ad hoc. These guys don't just wait for a disaster, they train for it. Weekly nets, simulated emergency tests, field deployments with land nav, repeater drops and workarounds for when that happens. I was talking to a guy earlier and he was explaining to me they had just ran a full blackout scenario last month. They said there was no grid, no cell, just radios and maps, and they got it to work. So this really boils down to this isn't just an interest in tech, it's their culture, at, like being that here in Colorado. It's based and born out of their needs. It's community, it's people who care enough to build something that works when everything else fails. So I'll end this here. Colorado's ham scene, kind of just like Alaska, certainly isn't flashy. It's definitely not corporate. It's absolutely real. And when the lights go out, these operators light up the airwaves. And here's the truth. Most people don't think about communication until it's gone, until the power's out, the cell towers are fried. And at that point, that means the emergency is already happening. But have a good comms plan established for your state, your community, or group, and you and even your operators, they will already be on the air already relaying intel, and figuratively or literally already saving lives. So guys, getting more prepared than you are right now isn't hard. Getting your ham license isn't hard. What's hard is consistently training, staying sharp, showing up when it counts, checking in and learning the gear. But if you do, you become part and could even help create something much, much bigger. And with that, we'll see you on the next one. Be safe.